So maybe you've never soldered two wires together before. Well, don't worry, it's not that hard. So basically, the term soldering is simply to lock and seal an electrical connection together using melted tin or tin lead coating. This simple process will keep oxygen and anything else from getting in, resulting in a failed connection. The best soldered connections are those that use a combination of a compression connection, such as a butt connector like this one, in conjunction with solder. But for this demo, I'll use a simple Western Union type twist connection that will work for most applications. For soldering these two wires together, I will have a well-ventilated room, a set of wire strippers. You can decide on what style you prefer. There are many kinds available. A soldering iron stand, my soldering iron, a moist paper towel folded into a square, a wet sponge can be used instead of this if you like, some acid-free rosin core solder meant for soldering wire, some solder wick just in case, and for when we're finished, some electrical tape or heat shrink tubing to wrap up and protect our newly soldered permanent electrical connection. There are other options available, but I'm showing these two. One note here, if the soldered connection I was working on was positioned above my head, I would definitely use protective safety glasses just in case a hot drip of solder was to drop on me. As far as soldering irons go, the heat output rating of these in watts can range from this small one at 25 watts up to 80 watts or larger. The 25 is good for basic applications like soldering this thin gauge wire or for components on circuit boards. And for bigger jobs, the 80 watt one can be used, like for this 10 or 8 gauge wire. The smaller iron wouldn't work on heavy wire as it won't create enough heat to melt the solder. You could use a large iron for smaller wires, but the larger output iron will more easily cause collateral damage to things it touches, like maybe components on a circuit board. For this demo, I'll use the 25 watt unit. As with everything, these irons can range in price from dirt cheap to high-end soldering stations with temperature regulation. This video was aimed at the average person who needs to solder a basic connection. First, find a well-ventilated room with a workbench or something where you can't burn anything with that iron or the liquefied solder that might drip during your job. Next, put your safety glasses on and plug in your soldering iron and place it on its stand. Be sure not to forget this thing on as it will burn things or people if it's touched. The soldering iron will take four or five minutes to warm up, so in that time, you can strip and prepare your wires. Now, no matter how you strip your wires, there's something here I must warn you about. Of course, don't hurt yourself while doing this. And, always be sure that when you cut into the insulation of the wire you're stripping, you are careful not to remove any strands of wire by mistake. If you do something like this, and the wire that's used is for a circuit that carries a heavy electrical current, you will have unknowingly created an electrical resistance in your connection. This resistance under heavy load situations will cause problems. Here is a comparison of two soldered wires carrying the same identical current in amperes. Using my thermal imaging camera, you can see how the connection on the top is the one with the cut strands and the one on the bottom is the one with no cut strands. Need I say more? Here I'll strip my two wires back from their ends approximately one half to three quarters of an inch. It's very important that the stripped wire appears clean and bright. If the wire strands appear dull or dark with corrosion or if they are green or black looking, that's a sign the wire may be corroded. Don't even waste your time if this is the case. Solder will never stick to those corroded wires. Get yourself some fresh wire. If you're using heat shrink tubing, slide it onto one of the wires now and position it well away from where you'll be soldering as heat will travel up the wire and it will make it shrink on you. The twist connection I prefer is the Western Union type connection. This is a standardized connection used in many industries including the one I work in. By holding the pair of wires, crossing them in the middle and then turning them around each other like this, you will create two hooks. It is very important to create a good electrical bond in your connection before you solder. When you do this, always try to keep those loose ends tight to the connection 
so they don't stick out and possibly poke through the electrical tape or heat shrink tubing later on. Once I'm satisfied the connection looks clean and tightly wound, I'll grab that moist square of paper towel and put it beside me on the bench. I will then take my hot soldering iron and wipe the wet paper towel with it. This I do to remove any corrosion and contaminants that likely will be on the tip of the iron. Now with my wires positioned to be soldered, I will hold my solder in one hand and my soldering iron in my other, and I will tin the tip of the soldering iron like this, and then place the tip under the connection to be soldered like this. That little bit of liquefied solder will now help bridge the heat from the tip of the iron into the new connection. Once the heat starts to transfer into the wire, I will place some solder between the soldering iron and the wire and let the solder suck into the connection. This is where if you're using corroded, dirty or contaminated wire, this operation will not work. The solder will just stay in a bubble on the iron. So here the goal is not to completely cover the connection in a ball of solder, but rather it is to coat the connection in a thin protective layer like this. If you end up with too much solder on your connection, you will need to remove the excess with your solder wick. You can tap or shake it off when it is still molten, but I do not recommend that unless you want silver tin stuck to everything around you, including yourself. You can use the solder wick like this. So now that you've soldered up your connection, after it is cooled down, you can slide the heat shrink down over the connection and make it shrink with heat. I prefer using a heat gun, but if you don't have one, you can use a lighter or a match to do it. Move the flame back and forth carefully underneath, starting well away, and then move closer until you see the tube starting to shrink. Don't let the flame touch the tube as it will quickly split and it will get coated with smoky soot as well. If instead of heat shrink, you're going the electrical tape way, hold the wires apart and with clean hands and fingers, wrap the tape from one wire in slow turns towards the other in a progressive movement while maintaining a wrinkle-free seal. Cut the tape off when you're done with scissors or carefully with a knife. And so there you have it. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them in the comment section below. And if you found this video helpful or interesting in any way, please leave a thumbs up as it really does help. I have more helpful videos that might be of interest, so please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.